Amazing. What are you drinking, Kim? It's a black tea. I love uh, black I wish tea. this was a bourbon. A <laughs> bourbon. Okay. <laughs> I feel you. I tried bourbon a couple of days ago. It was pretty good. Oh, it's gross. It's like they're chewing on a piece of wood. <laughs> yeah, I like Scots better, though. Oh, that's even worse. Really? I don't like none of that stuff. What are you into? Not really anything. That Molly, that MDMA? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Bam Bam? Like yeah. Colombian stuff? <laughs> <laughs> totally. All right, welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name's Ben. We're here to answer your shooting questions. On deck today, Hansik Kim. Hello. Hello. Hansik. That's and, pretty good. Yeah, thank you. I've been working hard on my pronunciation. Uh, Mr. Matt Hopkins. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello, Matthew. Everybody's happy to have you back on here. Are they? In your usual salty form. You're not all that salty lately. I just like saying you're salty, and then you get all salty about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're like, I'm not, I'm not fucking angry. I'm not angry. It's not funny. All right, question for Kimmy. Since he has poor eyesight and wears glasses, how does he prefer his prescription tuned for shooting? A little nearsighted, a little farsighted, whatever they give him, etc. Yes. So I have two different prescriptions. Uh, one of, course of them you is... Do. Of course you do. <laughs> you can't just have like... no. Like for me, when I was wearing contact lenses, I'm like, just uh -huh. I use just the regular ones, just the ones they give me. And I just no, use contact them. lens doesn't Jesus fit my Christ. eyes and eyes. No, no of oh course. Gosh. I got eyes no, but, and eyes. No, so but I for me, I'm it. such a moron. I was like, yeah, just, <laughs> I, I would be like, I use what they give me. Like, do I have choices in this? I don't know. But no, of course you have two prescriptions. Go on. I can't wait okay. to hear it. So one is regular, the one I, uh, you know, drive with, uh, live with, and the other one is shooting prescription. Of course. So I got it from a same location, and when I got it, I looked at the numbers. They say uh, Optev, whatever, op, I don't know. So the number I got was a, uh, like number one lower, actually higher than the regular number because my – uh, regular prescription is like negative, I forgot, negative eight, nine, something like that. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> and then my shooting prescription only on my right, which is dominant eye, was one higher. You are absolutely so you shattering like, stereotypes here, Kim. So, so just say you're eight, yeah. you're minus eight, and you went uh -huh. to a minus nine for your dominant eye? No, 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 minus seven. That would make it not see as good. So it was actually positive one to the regular negative eight. So well, my that dominant make it more blurry. So when I see the front side, my dominant eye can see the front side a little better. So it's not still super crystal clear, but if I shoot with the regular glasses, the front side will the edges of the front side will be so blurry. I can't really clearly see the alignment. And if I get that octave, octave, whatever, uh, up higher, I can see the clear edges. Yeah, so the front side figure is pretty clear now when I use the glasses. That seems backwards to me. Don't think about Maybe. it too hard. I, <laughs> do, you wanna, do you want me to tell you what I do? Oh, well, yeah, please. Oh, yeah. I noticed you have I glasses, use, Matt. I use what they give me. <laughs> of course, you do. And it's clear. So it's I clear. <laughs> it's clear, though. Like, I don't have a problem with it. I can see the front sight crystal clear, so. Yeah, uh, yeah that, is, that is what I did. When I, I only did one season in contacts, and then I got, got my eyes uh, lasered right after that. Unrelated to shooting, I just, I was at the perfect age to get it done, so I did that. That was good. Um. But I just carried extra contacts because the fucking things were just getting messed up. You know, you know how it is. All right, next question. Are dry fire gadgets? We get this question all the time. We're going to answer it again. Are dry fire gadgets such as trigger resetting dry fire magazine or a cert pistol? Good investments for dry fire training for USPSA. Thanks. What do you think? <laughs> I would spend that money to an ammo. 
All right. Um, well, I I know a couple uh, dry fire tool like uh, I forgot the name, but they have a CO two can, so it actually cycles. And people say the recoil is uh, there. Bullshit. Not, not like rear gun, but recoil is there and all that. I don't think that's really necessary because. Uh, you can pretty much do everything in your dry fire except the recoil management. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's just like that stuff is just, if, at the end of the day, it's not really worth the hassle. I, I will say that the trigger resetting dry fire mag is kind of cool. But I, I think that's only for Glocks, right? I don't know. No, who cares? Hey, Ben. I attended your Raleigh, North Carolina class about a year ago. I was a guy that blew up my calf in class. Yeah, yeah I remember this guy. <laughs> it was uh, like, you know, normally you'd think a guy getting a grievous injury like that would be funny, but it wasn't. It was just kind of sad. He was like hopping around, you know, on the second day. And I was like, oh, man, I kind of felt bad for the guy. Despite my reputation as a complete dickhead, I like felt <laughs> kind of bad, you know. And he wasn't like, it wasn't like he's a, like a particularly like, out of shape looking dude or whatever. He just like got hurt. It's, it sucks. Anyway, using what I've learned in class, plus what I've gleaned from your other training resources, I've gone from U to class to B. That said, one factor that's holding me back for better mash placement is my stage planning. My stage plans are very linear as I, as I'm used to have, I used to have a problem for getting targets, which I've overcome. The downside of using this technique is I tend to have more dead time where I'm not shooting targets. When I compare my performance to M or GM shooters, their plans tend to hop around the stage, which reduces dead time, not shooting targets. Another problem with my planning process is I'm not counting shots. Instead, I'm counting the targets as I shoot the stage. What the fuck? I'm not sure why I <laughs> use this process, but in talking with better shooters, it appears I'm the only genius that uses this technique. Yeah, you are. Obviously, an hold answer on, to hold improving on. my <laughs> planning process is to shoot more matches, which I'm doing. That said, how can I fix these issues in dry fire? Go ahead, Hopkins. What's the thing about if everybody's, if no one's doing what you're doing and you're winning, you're innovative, but if you're still losing, you're like, what's that saying? You're a fucking moron? Yeah. I don't okay. know the saying yeah. exactly, but it sounds about right. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, why would he be? He has M's and GMs locally to him. Why doesn't he talk to them? Because they're I'm, shooting the same stages as him. I think I'm just less intimidating. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no way. I'm I was less like, he's asking. On I a know his local show. guys. I'm way nicer than. No, I'm way meaner than they are. I should say. Are you? Yeah, I know the local guys pretty much everywhere, and I'm meaner than all of them. Um, okay, so the first one is forget forget about counting anything. When you're uh, uh, when you're shooting the stage, there shouldn't be counting, I would think, except for in one with one relatively rare exception, you would not count anything. Does that sound fair, guys? You're not counting shots. You're not counting targets. You're not counting jack shit. Yeah. Yeah. Not while shooting. Not while you're shooting. There's only one exception. Can you count? No. But in the uh, well, yeah, I guess on a classifier you have to count, but on a uh, if there's a stage where you feel like you are likely to shoot a lot of extras, you may want to count how many extra shots you have left. So, for example, I'm going to shoot seven shots from here. I have 11 in the gun. There's like 25-yard pieces of steel or some kind of shit out there. You might wish to count your, how many shots you have left. But even in that circumstance I just described, you wouldn't count. It would just be like, I'm going to shoot here until I run out of ammunition would be what you do, right? Yeah. It would be like, let's say there's uh, six shots over here and two 25-yard plates over here, and i got to shoot the 25-yard plates and then move to the six shots. I would know that if I fire more than three extras on the plates, then I have to reload as I move or something like that. So it's a really weird circumstance like that. So normally it's not productive to count at all. Yes? Are we, we agree on the, the fundamentals there, Hopkins? Yes. So I would I do that counting backwards also. So I would be like, I have five shots on this. If I take more than five, I'm doing a reload. I know I got to reload, yeah. Yes, okay. And then even then, you may not accurately count. And just like you kind of smell like I don't feel like I have enough and you just reload anyway. And it's not going to yeah. really cost you. Well, it's right? going to cost you way less than going Then sitting there like, did I – 
did he fire six shots or only five? You know, like <laughs> that kind of shit. Not helpful. Okay, so quick counting shit, you dumbass. Um, <laughs> I should say. Okay. Uh, let's, I think, as I read this, I think this guy could not keep this stage plan straight in his head. So he, he's watching the better shooters. He knows they have a better stage plan. He can't keep it straight. So then he has, he, he bitches out. So he has some, he has, shoots some other stage plan to make sure he doesn't forget anything to make it way less likely to walk by stuff and not shoot it. Does that sound like, is that what you guys are reading? So instead so. of like, okay, I'm going to move down the stage and I'm shooting on the left, shooting on the right, shooting on the left again. He's like, well, I'm going to shoot all the stuff on the left. Then I'm going to go over on the right side and shoot all that stuff and make it so he can't forget anything. Is that how you yeah. guys are reading it? Hopkins? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think he's doing here. So like, let's, I think realize that you're way later in your shooting career now. So it's like, stop doing that shit. So you're watching the better shooters take their plans and copy them. But then the, the key thing is rehearsing it in your head. So like, don't worry about counting stuff that's less. You shouldn't be thinking about shit when you're shooting the stage. You're not thinking about, about what's happening. You just execute it. And like the, the best test that I can think of is you close your eyes and you can see the entire stage in the first person as you shoot it without having to think about it. So it's like you can say, okay, slight step forward. Okay, I got target on the left, target on the right, you know, run out of position, dismount the gun, run, run, run over on the right side of the stage, target on the right, target on the left, you know, reload. You can, you can see every little detail uh, of the stage without having to think about it before you shoot it, before you shoot it. And then while you're shooting it, you just stay calm, execute your plan. You shouldn't be thinking about anything or counting how many targets you shot or shit like that. Like I can tell you, uh, without even asking these other two guys, I know that there's not active mental processes going on when they're shooting stages. They just shoot the stage and observe what's happening. They're not thinking about anything. It's the same thing that happens for any other tasks that you train and do a lot. Uh, it's like when you're driving, you can drive your car and talk on your phone without having to think about it because you practice driving your car a lot. You're just like, I want to go over there now, and you don't have to think like, okay, turn wheel, apply brake, apply clutch, shift gear. Like You don't have to think about any of that shit. You're just like, I want to be over there now, and you just go over there. The shooting should be the same way now that you've practiced it a lot. So make it the same way. Just quit thinking about the shit so much. It's like rehearse it in your head until you can, do, you, know, you can see the stage without having to think about it hard, and then execute that plan that you thought about. Does that sound fair, guys? Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Um, and also quit being a dumbass. You're also bad. God yeah. damn. Oh, so, shit, I forgot the second part of his question. No, Kim, say what you were going to say. Okay, so my first nationals, uh, I arrived in the morning of shooting, and then uh, I basically asked my friend, hey, how do you shoot? Because I, I had to shoot in the afternoon, and I had maybe two hours to look at all the stages, and my friend helped me. Okay, just go there, shoot those number of targets. And then I did that, and I realized uh, Aro saying, hey, failure to engage. So I skipped one target, and after that, uh, every match I go to, First, I arrive earlier, way earlier, maybe the day before if it's a major, or like at least two hours or hour and a half before the shooting starts. And then the first thing I do in the walkthrough is I locate the targets and count the number of shots I'm shooting. So the stage description will have how many shoot, how many shots in the stage. If it's a 28, I'm going to count actually outside of the shooting area. So I am actually going into where the targets are, not from the port or in the shooting box, uh, if it's a big stage. So I would locate every single target because one time I did double engage one target and skip one target because I was counting everything from the inside. So some stage is a big stage and you can't really see and there's multiple ways to shoot, then I would just go outside and start counting left to right kind of manner. So I'm making sure where the location is and also number of shots. Good. Yeah. That's good advice. I have one other thing I'd like to say. We, we didn't address this. How can I fix these issues in dry fire is a question he asks. Kim, what, what's your answer to that? How, how is he going to fix this <laughs> in dry fire? Yes, I fixed it in dry fire too. So I basically uh, 
set up a stage with multiple targets and I would memorize them and then when I first started uh, my goal was there was no time limit I would say oh there's how many number what 10 targets in this location and I would walk through in my mind uh, visualize in my mind a couple times and then I try to do that and now I'm shooting IPSC there's three minute walkthrough so I am doing only uh, walk through twice or walk through once visualize twice so what I why I'm basically doing is I'm basically pushing my brain limit so if I can do one plus one uh, when I first learned math now I can do what 200 plus 200 something like that so I'm ba basically trying to make my brain capacity faster and faster so I can memorize faster with minimum number of visualization and this is something people should develop in the first place. Yeah, it does uh, take work. It do, you have to learn this. It's yeah, not a... I, I agree. And I, I still have like targets all over the fucking place, right? In your dry fire area. I mean, as big of an area as you've got, maybe you live in a region where you have a basement. Like, that's cool. You can have targets all over the place. I mean, like 30 targets. And then come up with a stage. And, you know, don't think about it too hard just like the stages like okay to shoot this this and this in this order then move over there do this and do that and this and that and make it as complicated as you want to make it make it so you don't engage every target maybe you engage one target twice in the course of the stage things like that and what you're working on is not shooting that dry fire stage the best way you could come up with to shoot it in terms of time but just you're working on the memorization part where you're going to make the stage your bitch and not the other way around where it's like you're going to memorize it and execute it that way that you just memorized, and you're working on the memorization part. Yeah. So that is something you can do in your dry fire. All right, let's move on. One more question. Do you train, dry fire, parentheses, you put that, to anticipate shooting in variable lighting conditions? I run an indoor match and sometimes struggle in inconsistent lighting. Sometimes your sights are in a dead lighting area. Other times it has a spotlight blasting my rear sight. Any way to train for that, Kim? I feel like shooting uh, like a dry fire training indoors is pretty good preparation for what that's going to be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you are wanting to do that in dry fire, well, first you can change your lighting situation too. Of course. <laughs> Just say, go turn the lights off. If you figure that out, you... There you go. Uh -huh. Have fun with yeah, that. But another way to do is uh, actually you can, I use this method when I always shoot outside uh, when the sun is bright. So I sharpie the top of the fiber optic. I have a green fiber optic and there's, especially in indoors, there's a big difference if you uh, put sharpie on the dot or not. The brightness of the fiber optic will change a whole lot. So if you're shooting with a fiber optic, that's a good option to experiment with sometimes. And especially if you have at least two same guns, I have a backup gun and stuff. Uh, I have one sharp aid all the time because it's my match gun. And my dry fire gun is usually not sharp aid up on the top. So I can alternate sometimes too. But it's not something I always do. You got anything for that, Hopkins? Uh, my main thing is I shoot indoors and outdoors. So indoors every week on a monthly, like weekly match. Dude, indoors sucks so hard. It's not that bad, Fuck honestly. Off. It's not, honestly. Uh, I don't like it. I'm an outdoors type of cat. Just doing it, you'll learn a lot. That's the biggest thing. I learned I don't like it. Really? I don't like shooting indoors. I mean, I like shooting, and I'll shoot indoors if I have no other option, but... And when it's cold outside or raining, or maybe cold yeah. and rainy, or maybe snowy, then shooting indoors has its advantages for sure. But I definitely prefer outdoors. That's just me. Yeah. Ugh. And yes. oh, one thing, one thing really good to experiment with is uh, when I shot in Florida first time, the sun was right in my eye, and I couldn't <laughs> see a thing. And yeah, you, you can. Yeah, you can uh, train that facing the sun. You can either go to the range when the sun is facing you, of <laughs> course. Or if you're doing at your house, uh, I have many uh, light lamps. And then I would place my target right uh, underneath a lamp. And the lamp is actually facing me. And in that case, 
uh, shooting a hard shot on that, seeing the fiber uh, fiber optic or front sight notch clearly can be challenging, and that's something you can experiment with a little bit. So when the front sight is actually illuminated, uh, actual sight alignment of the top notches can trick you a little bit because you can't really see the top notch very clearly because of the illumination. And being able to tell which part of the front sight is actual top notch or illumination. Yeah, that's it. Well, good advice, Kim. I'm feeling it. I feel you. All right, listener people, that's it. That's all we got for today. If you have a question you'd like the answer to, go to bensaker.com, send me an email uh, with your question, and, uh, you know, we'll address it. I'll put it to the boys, and we'll talk about it. It's going to be great.